Okay, so let's go over what tools we'll need. Chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters. I'm gonna use this skinny pen to wrap wire around to make a coil. If you don't have that, we found these random objects from around the house. This is what you don't want to use. A pen like this because it has things that are gonna obstruct the way when you want to remove the wire coil. How about this screwdriver? This is probably doable because it doesn't have any wide ridges that prevent you from pulling the coil off after you make it, so that could do. How about this string winder? It's a little bit thick. I probably wouldn't go any wider than this, but this is fine too. How about this chopstick? Chopstick might be okay, but it's a little bit skinny. Any thinner than that and you're gonna have some really small coils, but you know, it's your jellyfish, so that's totally fine. I would recommend having a dish or plate nearby, something with some heft. You could use a bowl so that you can put your beads in there and they don't get knocked around if you bump the table. And then we have our kit, which uh, let's do a really quick inventory check of everything that comes in the kit. Jellyfish frame, bag of dangly bits, 24 gauge wire, 28 gauge, 18 gauge, 16 gauge wire, heavier, thinner for the tentacles, a bag of dangly bits, pre-strung strand of colored crystals. You may have this color scheme or this one here. We're gonna be working with this blue-green one today. The instructions are exactly the same. Leave these on the strand until we begin working with them. Let's go through our bag of dangly bits. I'm going to go ahead and dump my bag of dangly bits into my dish. Okay, if you have trouble distinguishing, just consult your printout. It should have a life-size jellyfish and all the beads. You should have three different sizes of clear crystals, eight millimeter, three pieces, six millimeter, six pieces, four millimeter, eight pieces. And we have a brass ring to hang the jellyfish from, four different length chain segments. These are gonna be the chain tentacles. All right, so everything that comes in your kit, we will be using to make leaks, head pins, some whimsical wire forming, and some basic bead wrapping. We are going to make this jellyfish in four stages, constructing dangling links that will connect to the body and the chain tentacles. Make the wire coil tentacles, wrapping all of the colored crystals onto the body. And lastly, attach all of the dangling parts. And then you're finished! So for stage one, we are going to be making handmade links with all the clear crystals. We're going to begin where your jellyfish will hang from, this brass ring. Make these marginal tentacles down here. The clear crystal dangles that hang off of the chain tentacles. All of these dangling parts are going to be attached to the jellyfish at the very end. All right, so we are first going to grab this four millimeter crystal here. Eep. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> um, so this is the littlest one. Do be careful, and you might not get, <laughs> you not, might not be lucky like me, and it won't, you know, it didn't bounce anywhere. But okay, so when you work off the spool, the order of operations is a little different. So you're actually gonna put the bead on first, and then start making stuff um, because you only have one open end. We're gonna make our first loop. So you're gonna take these chain nose pliers, take a short length here, so about an inch and a half, something like that, that looks good. So we're gonna brace, and then you're gonna take the very tip of your pliers, and you're just going to apply pressure this way and make a right angle, like that. You are going to move down the line here a little bit, maybe that far. The placement of your pliers here dictates the size of your loop. Today we're just gonna kind of do mid-range. So we're gonna put it around this area every time we make a loop. Just be a little bit gentle when you are squeezing this because you could actually squeeze really hard and cut into the wire. We're going to rotate and then we're gonna take our hand and finish off that loop there, just like that. Before we close our loop, we are going to hook in this brass ring. You just kind of Snap it in there. Ta -da! All right, now we are going to grab your chain nose pliers. Do you want to reach across this loop? 
you see where the wires cross over here? You don't want to crush that because they will actually cut into each other and you will, this loop will just eventually break. So try and kind of wiggle it in there so that it reaches across. The reason why you want to reach across is because once you start doing stuff, if you notice, if you only brace one side, the loop is like rotating around and stuff. So we want to reach across. So you're going to take your round nose pliers and you're just going to grab these and rotate around that stem. So I usually will do a half turn and then I'll change position of my hands and then I will rotate another half turn and then I will grab again and do another half turn and then I usually will kind of use my hands to guide. We're going to change direction so it's a really slight change of direction there to overlap. Let me move that out of the way. So if you see here I change direction I'm starting to wrap and if you you can see that it's stacked on top of the other one. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want to start going upwards like that. And then once we run out of space here, you see that it's right up against the pliers. It's time to snip. And just be really careful anytime you are have your fingers near a nub of wire like that because tiny lengths of wire, of course, can be very stabby. Okay, so we are going to snip. I like to cut about halfway into the width of that coil that we just made and then tuck that in. So for this part, you take one jaw of the pliers and brace against the barrel of that coil we just made and then squeeze that nub inwards so that it's not sticking out and being all pokey and stuff. Now we have the beginnings of our first handmade chain link. So for this part, we're gonna repeat the same steps that we just did, except just wanna give yourself a tiny, the tiniest bit of room, maybe like that much room. You see that there? And then we're gonna do the same thing. So you wanna position your pliers, not right up against the bend, but a little bit down, and then somewhere in the middle of your pliers, mid-range loop, and then we're gonna rotate. And it should look like that. And it's okay if it's not, you know, perfect. And then we're gonna reposition the pliers, pull this around. So now we have that. And this we can close off. So you're gonna brace. This is a lot easier to brace because there's nothing in the loop yet. And we are just gonna, so make sure you don't crush that crossover point there. And then we're gonna wrap. This is nice, a nice long length, so you can just use your hands for the whole thing. So we're going to pull and wrap, and then once it starts to meet up with the bead there, the wire, we're gonna change direction and start moving upwards. It's just a slight, very slight directional change until you wrap and you get up to the loop. And then it's time to snip. So I like to cut like right into the middle, the width of the barrel of that coil. And then we're gonna do that same. So you're gonna brace against the coil there and press that little nub inwards a little bit. And you should have your first link. Now if it's a little wonky like this, if you hold it sideways, you see that it's kind of a little bit bent and also the loops are facing different directions. Just brace one loop and you can hold the other side with your fingers and then just straighten it like this and then rotate as needed if you want the loops to be facing the same direction. So I need to rotate a little bit more and then when you hold it sideways you can see nice and straight. Yay! You made your first chain link! And using this technique you can make an entire necklace or bracelet. <laughs> okay. I guess we're still recording. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. You're fired. <laughs> uh, moving on to the, moving on to the uh, next link. So we'll just straighten that a little bit, and then also be careful with these little containing wire wraps because they could also be pokey. So watch out. Just kind of stretch them out so that they're not so short. Um, okay, okay. 
here we go so first things first we're going to thread our six millimeter crystal onto our spool if you're not sure which one's a six millimeter just consult your printout it should have true to life size well as close as we could the size of everything so we're going to repeat the exact same steps we are going to use about an inch and a half of length maybe that far I use my just before my second digit here we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna use the tip of our pliers don't squeeze too hard because you could cut the wire and then we're just gonna brace on one side and then rotate to make a right angle just like that and then we are going to position our pliers not right up to the bend but a little bit down we're gonna do a half turn that looks a little bit small of a loop, so I'm actually going to stretch this out by pulling this down the plier and it'll kind of stretch out the circle, or the half circle. So that's a little bigger, cool. And then we are going to wrap that around like a so. And then before we close off this loop, we're gonna hook in the previous link we just made. We see the beginnings of a chain. Okay, so you're gonna take your chain nose pliers and we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna kind of reach across, and once you have a good grip of that, we are going to take our chain nose pliers and do a half turn, and then we're gonna reposition our hands, do another half turn, reposition, and go half turn, and then we are going to slightly, if you see, if you can see the direction, I'm kind of just slightly moving it upwards so that we can start overlapping onto that previous coil and just keep going till you run out of space. Usually about two wraps. I like to keep this section short just so my links aren't so incredibly long. But if you like long links, you can do that too. Oh, actually it'll use more wire, so maybe don't do that. <laughs> We have a finite amount of wire here. Okay, so we're gonna snip into the barrel. So if you noticed, I kind of held my finger against the wire. Not hard, because you don't want to stab yourself, but that kind of prevents the wire from flying across the room in random directions. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to squeeze this nub on there so that it's uh, not sticking out. And then we're gonna slide this up to that wrap and we're gonna repeat. So make a right angle, but give yourself just a tiny bit of room there. Not too far down, just enough to make a little bend. And then we're gonna position a little bit down, maybe like this far, and you want the wire placement to be in the middle of the plier. And then we're gonna rotate. So I usually will kind of hold my fingers here so that I have something to brace the, the link. Once you do that, we are going to brace and wrap. And then just keep wrapping till it seems like you got up to the crystal. And then start moving upwards to overlap. snip into the middle width of the coil we just made and I don't know if you can see but we're gonna just tuck that nub just a really slight motion there and then we're just gonna check and see if our link is pretty straight it's got a slight it's a little wonky but that's not not easy to fix not terrible so you're just gonna grip this and then if you need to straighten it you're just gonna push it like that and then maybe push this part use your thumb to push this forward and then pull this loop back and now it's nice and straight and now you have two links woohoo all right so go ahead if at any point if you need to catch up uh, press pause and you know come back to me when you're ready all right, 
Now for the final step in this, we are taking this eight millimeter bead. We're going to make a link for that. We'll just straighten this. When you straighten it after you've been working on it, I'm just afraid the end might be sharp, so don't go all the way to the end because I don't want you guys to cut yourselves. Okay. All right, off we go. So we're going to thread this on and it will stay. So you're gonna take about an inch and a half it there, just a rough estimate. So we're gonna do the same steps we've been doing. You're gonna make a right angle there and then we are going to move down a little bit as we have been. Also check the placement in the actual pliers. So let's scoot it down to the middle. And then we're gonna be, don't forget to not squeeze this too hard because it will cut the wire. So we're gonna rotate and then if you notice I'm using my fingers to brace since it's quite flimsy. So I'm kind of holding right up against that initial bend. And then we should have a little half or partial circle. And then you're gonna come around there and we're going to loop this on just like that. And we're gonna brace. So remember, you don't wanna crush this into that loop. And you don't wanna crush that crossover point either. So you see it's still free, still free to move around. Okay, so we're gonna grab our round nose pliers and we are going to rotate, do a half turn, and then we're gonna half turn, and then I like to grab, change the position, grab them behind, and then half turn, and then I'm gonna start just changing direction a little bit, just the tiniest change of direction, and start overlapping there. And wrap, wrap, wrap. So once you run out of space, for me, that's about two wraps. That's how, how many I like to do. We're going to snip into about the, the halfway point of that, the coil. And then I'm just gonna gently put my finger against that so that it doesn't fly all over the place. If you don't mind, you know, I'm sure it won't fly too far. It'll probably just be on your table somewhere. Okay, and we're going to brace the plier against this back, this coil here, and then we're gonna press that nub in there so that it's nice and smooth so you don't poke yourself later. And we're gonna push the bead against that loop we just made. And we're gonna make another right angle. And don't forget to give yourself just a tiny bit of room, not a ton of space, you don't wanna go down here. It's really just, oh wait, actually that's a bit far. Maybe that much. And then we're going to move down a little bit. Don't forget to position the wire about midway in the pliers. We're gonna do a partial turn and I'm kind of bracing the bead here. And then it should look like that. I don't know why I just grabbed the wrong pliers. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna bring this around and we are actually going to do something different. We're not gonna close this off because we need to attach this later. So we are going to snip here. Maybe like same, use your measuring method, <laughs> if one could call it that. And we're gonna snip. So it's always better to have a little extra than not enough. So we're gonna leave this just like that. Oh, I forgot to check in the, actually we don't need to check that yet. I was gonna straighten this link out, but we're still gonna work with it. So now we have this top chain segment that our jellyfish hangs from. And later, we're going to attach all of the moving parts on there. But first, we wanna wrap the inside before we do that, because it's really annoying to wrap all the stuff while you have dangling parts. So we're just gonna work on all the finishing the dangling parts first, and then we're gonna move on to the jellyfish. So next, we are going to work on what I like to call, I, I believe they're called marginal tentacles. They're like the little short fringe looking tentacles that jellyfish have. I thought this would be a cute way to represent that. So we're gonna work on these two next. So you, we're gonna learn how to make a head pin. We're gonna start with these bottom ones. Head pin is going to be just a, a stopper link. It's a link where you can end and have a dangling segment. 
So let's begin. We, we, you're gonna need, we don't need the jellyfish right now. You are going to need two six millimeter beads and four four millimeter beads. So again, if you need to pull these suckers out, go ahead and press pause. All right, ready? Here we go. So I'm gonna move these and I'm just gonna work with this one. So I am probably going to pull out some more wire here. So we're just gonna push that through and then pull, 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 pull. That's okay if it gets a little kinked up. And then let's also, let's do a little bit more. We'll do one more segment and then just straighten that with your nail. Just don't go all the way to end because I don't want you guys to hurt yourself by accident. Okay, so we are going to thread this tiny four millimeter bead and then to make a head pin, this is a very practical, functional way to make a head pin. We'll have a video soon of different stylized head pins that can look cute. You can do all kinds of things, but I like this really quick, functional, practical head pin. So all you do is you take the very point of your chain, uh, your round nose pliers, and you just make the tiniest little curve there, like a like a little J, except when J's go this way. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Um, okay, so we are going to actually press that up against itself there like that. And then <laughs> you're going to put this kind of deep into the jaws of your pliers. You're gonna crush it. So if you notice, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks flat now. So when you flatten it, it actually hardens the metal so it's more likely to keep its shape. So, so usually uh, hardening, like if you bend metal back and forth over and over again, that also hardens it or crushing it, uh, hammering it does the same thing. Um, it's really useful for keeping your shape when you work with soft metal like copper. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna make a right angle just like we have been, but don't forget to give yourself a tiny bit of space, not a ton, and it should look like that, your right angle. And then we're gonna go down a little bit. So you don't wanna put the pliers this close, you wanna go down a little bit, and then don't forget to check the placement on the pliers. We want a mid-range loop, so we're gonna make a partial turn there and it should look like that. And then we're gonna go around. This is, sometimes it might get stuck on your pliers. Oop. All right, so it should look like that. And if your loop or your stem is a little bit off or something like that, that's okay too. If, uh, if it looks like this, you can just put this back in and turn it further see if you can get it to straighten out. And if not, it's okay, it's a jellyfish underwater. It's supposed to be, you know, wavy and stuff. Okay, so we're gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. So keep wrapping until you get down to the bead. And then we're gonna start moving upward slightly just so that we can overlap onto the previous wraps we just did. I like this overlapping the double wrap method because it feels a little bit more sturdy and stable to me. So we're gonna snip about halfway into the width of that coil we just did and just be careful not to cut your any of the other wires there. So we're just gonna tuck that and then we can do a check and see if it looks straight. Looks pretty good. I'm just gonna straighten it just a tiny bit there like that. So now it's nice and straight. And now you have your first little drop. Yay! Okay, so we're gonna repeat this step for the other side. So I'm gonna set this aside here. And we're going to thread this. I'm just gonna straighten this a little bit. Thread this four millimeter ball onto our spool here. We're going to repeat the same steps for 
this head pin. Head pin is just a term for making a link that has a stopper at the end so that you can have a dangling point. Oop. So you're gonna take the very tip of your round nose pliers and just grab the end of the wire and make a tiny, tiny little half turn there. And then you're gonna take the chain nose pliers and then just we're gonna smoosh that into itself like that. So that creates a tiny nub. And you're gonna insert that into your pliers and crush it. Just squeeze really hard so it's nice and flattened. And then we can let this drop down onto that little head pin. We're gonna do the same thing now. We're going to make a right angle. Just give yourself a tiny bit of space there. And then, actually I'm gonna push it down further so that it makes more of a right angle, a little sharp angle there. And then we're gonna move down a little bit. And then don't forget to watch the placement of the pliers here. Oops, the placement of the wire because we want mid-range loops. Just like that. And then we're going to bring that around. And we're going to grip this. And make sure you're not crushing that crossover point. And you're going to wrap, wrap, wrap. Until you get to the bead and then start moving upwards. Until you get up to the loop and we're going to snip about halfway into the width of that coil we just made. And then we're going to tuck. So just press that in and then we're going to check and see how our link looks. If you see it's got it's kind of curved up like that. If you don't want it to look like that, just grab your loop and then press this straight. All right. Now you have two head pin links, two dangles, two drops. So the next step will be making another link. These Tentacles, the little marginal tentacles, actually have two four millimeter beads right next to each other. So we're gonna take another four millimeter crystal and we're gonna thread it onto our spool. We're gonna take an inch and a half of length, just like we have been, and then take the tip of your pliers and make a right angle here, and then move down, and then make sure it's around the mid range your jaws and just make a partial turn like that just bring that around and let's take our little dangle there we're gonna snap that in just like that so it's got an opening you just pull that through and we are going to brace this loop without smushing this loop into the wire, nor do we want to crush this crossover section here. You're gonna take your round nose pliers and do a half turn, reposition your hands as needed, do another half turn, and then go behind, and then half turn, and then we are gonna start moving upwards. So just a slight direction change, start overlapping. Once we run out of space there, if you see we're right up to the pliers. And then we're going to snip. Just be careful not to cut. <laughs> that looks scary, doesn't it? It's not actually my finger, it's just <laughs> sticking to my finger. Okay, and then we're going to tuck that little end there. I don't know if you can. so that it's not sticking out. Let our four millimeter bead drop down. And repeat, lather, rinse, repeat. So we're gonna make a right angle, give yourself a tiny bit of room, 
and then I like to, if you only have enough space to bend it like that far before this bead is in the way, you can just use your hands and then press down further so that it makes a nice right angle there. All right, and then we're gonna move down a little bit. Uh, Mid-range loop. And we're gonna do a partial turn, so it looks like that. Bring this around. And take your chain nose pliers, brace, and then wrap. So this wire is pretty soft, so you don't need to pull super hard to where, you know, anything like that is happening. If that does happen, totally fine. You can always straighten that out with your other pliers. So, so we're gonna wrap till we get to the bead and then we're gonna start overlapping until we get up to the loop there. And then just snip. Oops. So if your loop gets pulled a little bit tight like that, you can, uh, if it bothers you, you can fix it. If it doesn't, you know, it's a jellyfish. It's supposed to be flowy. <laughs> but if it does bother you, you can put it into your round nose pliers and use your nails. And you're actually just like pulling it down onto the jaws, like trying to press it down so that it gets a little bit more round. Na -na. And then we can do a check and see how our link looks. It looks a little bit like the two loops are a little bit rotated and it's a little bent. And you can leave it if you want or if you want to straighten it, I would brace one side and then just press so that it's straightened and then if they need to be rotated so that they line up because one side is kind of facing a different direction you can just rotate as needed. So they're completely straight. Woohoo! All right, so we're gonna repeat this exact same thing for the other side. So one more, four millimeter crystal going onto our spool. So we're gonna thread that on. We're going to use about an inch and a half. Make that right angle again. Move down a little bit, about midway on your plier jaws. And we're gonna make that partial turn there and bring that around. And then before we close this off, we want to snap in our little end dangle there, just like that. And you're gonna brace, so don't forget, you wanna reach across both sides of the loop don't crush that crossover section there and don't crush that part either. All right, so we're gonna take the chain nose pliers and do a half turn and then reposition our hands and do a half turn and then go behind and do a half turn and then we're going to start overlapping. So if you see, I kind of change course there and wrap until you Get right up to the pliers there. So you can see it's pretty snug up against the pliers. And we are going to snip that. Just be careful not to snip any other wires. And if you do, it's not the end of the world. That's the benefit of having a double wrap. Okay, so we're gonna tuck that, snip and tuck. Wasn't there a show called Nip Tuck? Or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever watch that show? No. It's like... Um, Did you ever watch the show? No. Isn't there another show called House or something? It's like, they're the same, right? It's like surgeon shows or something? <laughs> you could tell I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> I, I, a lot of people liked House. That's with Hugh Laurie, which... And it was like about hospitals? He's out. He's a British dude and he has a great American accent. Kind of comes through a little bit. Okay, so don't forget, you make that right angle, move down a little bit down the line, and then, you know, you want mid-range loop, so placement on the pliers, and then do a partial turn. It's a random question, by the way. Well, because I always say snip and tuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, and snip, 
snip tuck, um, like a nip tuck. So you're gonna brace that and just make sure you don't crush that crossover point there and wrap, wrap, wrap until you get down to the bead and then start overlapping and keep going upwards till you hit the loop. And then you're going to snip about halfway into the width of the barrel. And then we're gonna tuck, tuck that in. And we're gonna take a look at our link here. And you notice there's a little curve. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, not gonna lie, so <laughs> that's why I keep going back and checking this. But you know, you could just breeze through this part and don't you know, don't worry about it if you just want your jellyfish to look, you know, organic and flowy. I'm just like, everything has to be straight. <laughs> so just grab your loop and then press so that the two loops are straight. Yay! Looky there. Okay, so the last portion on these little marginal tentacles are the six millimeter rounds. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. So you're gonna take a six millimeter bead, just take a gander at your spool. Uh, we'll probably need a little more length. So let's go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna rotate this back, this little holder wrap, rotate it back around. Um, okay, so we're just gonna push that through, get some more length. Let's do one more section here and then just straighten this with pressing your fingernail against your index finger and then just stop short of the end just in case you guys it's a little short I mean uh, sharp okie dokie here we go six millimeter crystal on it goes making a loop all right so maybe that much length right angle like a soul moving down the line mid-range loop that's a little big right there turn and then complete the loop and then snap into place Dink. And we're gonna brace a good one. I didn't have to do too much wiggling for that. And then we're going to grab and then rotate. Reposition hands. Rotate in front. Reposition hands go behind and rotate behind. And then we're going to start moving upwards and overlapping on the previous wrap we just did. Once you get all crammed up in there and there's no more no more space. We're gonna snip tuck. So about halfway into the width of that coil. And then we're gonna tuck that. And let that drop down. And then the same deal. Make a right angle, but give yourself a tiny bit of room there. If the pliers start to hit the bead and this is as far of a bend you can go, I like to just kind of press down, put, put your finger pretty close to the bend and then press down a little bit so that you have a nice right angle like that. And then we're gonna move down the line, make sure we're doing like a mid-range loop. And a half turn, or partial turn, I guess that's less than half. And then for these, we can actually close this off, unlike that previous segment we did, because we're gonna do something different with this later, so. So go ahead and, so I know that in the beginning, when I first started making jewelry, I would have a loop, and then when I was holding it here, I would pull so hard that the loop would actually like close off or you know so it's uh the wire is really soft so the amount of force needed to do a lot of these things is very minor so you don't have to pull super hard uh you know you can just 
gently brace and then you know you could even just push with one finger like that you see how the wire just the amount of force required is very minimal like you don't really have to pull super hard on this you're just kind of guiding the wire around that stem until you wrap down to the bead and then you can start overlapping so especially because this wire is not that thick I mean you do need some force when you're making like the jellyfish frame the really thick wire it does you know require a little bit more manhandling all right so we're gonna snip right there and tuck snip and tuck we're gonna check our link it's a little rotated the loops are facing different directions so I'm just gonna grab this one and I'm gonna turn Na -na. all right first marginal tentacle down one left to go so grab your six millimeter bead and now we're going to straighten this a, a wee bit so we're going to thread six millimeter on and then we're going to use about an inch and a half make that right angle and then we're going to move down the line somewhere around the middle of our pliers let's do a partial turn go all the way around and before you close it off hook in your other segment your other side that has just the two beads and then we're going to grip that without crushing this here or crushing that crossover point and we're going to wrap so half turn half turn and then change direction start going upwards all right and then we're gonna snip and tuck okie dokie let's go ahead and push that up against the loop we just made we're gonna make a right angle give yourself a tiny bit of room and if you can't turn anymore because the beads blocking the way just go ahead and use your fingers and make that angle a little sharper if needed and then we're gonna move down nice mid-range loop do a partial turn. You don't have to pause like that, by the way. I just do that so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're gonna close this off. So remember, you don't have to pull super hard. You're actually just kind of guiding the wire in the direction you want it to go. So it's a very gentle, you know, process, especially with really thin wire like this. So we're just gonna go, go, go. Around and around we go. I like to keep going until we basically hit the base of the loop there. So, then we're gonna snip and tuck. And then we're gonna check our little link, see if it looks okay. Looks pretty good. I'm just gonna rotate a little bit. I'm gonna turn this and then also flat. I'm gonna open these loops up so that they're more straight. Yay! All right, now we have our marginal tentacles. So these go here and then we have our top dangling segment for later. Next we have these dangles that will attach to your chain tentacles. So there are four chain tentacles. Three of them will have beads hanging off of them and actually one of them does not. We are going to identify which chain is which after this segment, but first we're just going to construct the dangles. So we're just going to work on these two 
here, this four millimeter and six millimeter bead. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all this other stuff out of the way. So go ahead and take a second to grab these two beads, six millimeter, four millimeter. Okay, we're gonna take our 24 gauge wire, which is the same spool we've been working with this whole time, which is the thicker one. All right, so we are going to begin with a head pin. You're gonna take your four millimeter crystal and we're going to thread it onto the wire. We're gonna make a head pin again, just like we have been. So you're gonna make a tiny little curve there with the tip of your round nose pliers and then you're gonna grab your chain nose, give that a squish so that you have a little nub like that and then you're going to insert it into deep into your plier jaws and just give it a good squeeze and crush it until it is nice and flattened like that and then we're going to drop our four millimeter bead down and you can do a little check if you want to make sure it stops appropriately and then we're going to continue making loops just like we have been so you're gonna make a right angle, but you're going to give yourself just a tiny bit of room. You don't wanna to go too far down. So a tiny bit of space. And then if you run out of room to make your bend, you can do as we've been doing. This looks okay, actually. But you can just increase the bend by pressing with your fingers. So you're gonna take your chain nose pliers and we are going to move down the line about that far. Don't forget to check your alignment here because we want mid-range loops. And then you're gonna do a partial turn. Should look like that. You're gonna go bring the wire around, pull that off and brace with your chain nose. Just make sure you don't crush that crossover point of the wire. And you're just gonna wrap, wrap, wrap until you get down to the bead and then we're going to start overlapping until you run out of space there and then we're going to snip and tuck so we're going to snip about halfway into the width of the barrel coil we just made and we're going to tuck that in perfect and now you have your little dangly piece. Moving on to our six millimeter crystal. We're going to thread it onto our spool and then we're going to give ourselves about an inch and a half of length which is about that long. You're going to make that right angle just like we've been doing and we're going to move down the line here and then make sure you check the placement there. That looks good. Do a partial turn so that it looks like that. And then we're gonna bring this wire around. So before you close this off, we are going to hook in our little dangly bead that we just finished. And then you're gonna brace. Make sure you're not smooshing any of these other crossover points. We're gonna rotate around, half turn, half turn, and then we're going to start overlapping here. So go over the previous wraps we just did until you kind of run out of space there. And then it's time to snip and tuck. So we're just gonna cut that. Press that little end in. All right, and we're gonna drop our crystal down against the loop. And we're gonna make a right angle again. Just a tiny bit of space. That looks good. And then we're gonna move down the line and don't forget to check the placement on the pliers. And we're gonna just do a partial turn there and then we're gonna bring this around. So this is another one where we're actually gonna leave it open because we still need to attach this to the chain. 
So let's go ahead and give this an inch and a half of length, just like we have been. And we'll set that aside for now. And let's do the next chain tentacle dangle. So you're gonna take another four millimeter crystal. We're gonna thread it onto our spool. And we're gonna make head pin. So you just do the tiniest little curve there and give that a squish, crush it. And now we have our head pin. And just do a little check, make sure it plugs up the hole of your bead. And we're gonna make a right angle. So bend that. If your pliers kind of push against the bead because you don't have enough space, just use your fingers. Just go right up against that little corner you just made. And you can press down and make the bend a little bit more drastic. And then we're going to move down a little bit. Check the placement here. This is a little bit too far down the plier. So let's go like right there. That's good. And then do a partial turn. We're gonna bring that around. And this one we can close off. So remember, you don't have to pull super hard when you're doing this wrapping just because this is a pretty thin wire and copper is very soft. So you're just kind of guiding it around. Very little force is needed. You're gonna snip that and tuck. And then you can check and see how your link looks. If you can see the loop is a little bit wonky there. So if you want to straighten it, you can just press like that so that it's nice and straight. All right, the next bead in the sequence is another six millimeter. So we are going to make a loop. You're gonna be a loop pro now. So we're gonna give ourselves about an inch and a half. You're gonna make that right angle. Move down the line. Make sure you're in the mid range of your plier jaws. Do that partial turn and then We're gonna hook in our little dangle that we just made. Doink. And we're gonna brace that there. And wrap, wrap, wrap. So I like to wrap about, oops, two times, just so the link isn't so long. So after I do two times, I start to move upwards and wrap around the previous coil that we just made. Now we're going to snip right about there and tuck that in. And then we're gonna let our bead slide down towards the loop. And then we're gonna make another right angle giving ourselves a tiny bit of space. And then if you can't, if the pliers mash up against the bead there, just kind of make that into a sharper angle by pressing down. And then we're gonna move down the line a little bit and then make sure it's around the mid point of your plier jaws. You're gonna make that bend, come back around. So this one has three beads in the sequence so we can go ahead and close this off. <laughs> so wrap, wrap, wrap until you get down to the crystal and then start moving upwards until you get to the base of your loop there. And then go ahead and snip about midway into the barrel of that coil and we're gonna tuck that little end in. 
Cool. So let's take a gander at our link. It looks a little wonky, so I'm gonna grab this end without crushing this other link we have there, and I'm just gonna straighten it. If you see how I did that. And I'm gonna take the other side, and then I'm just gonna straighten that too. Just a really subtle movement. And you can see how now the loops are lined up. Nice and straight. Which you totally don't have to do that. I'm just, you know, I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. So let's get a little bit more length out of our spool here. And we might have to scoot these little coils around. So go ahead and just push through and whichever loop comes out there is the one you want to grab. And we'll straighten that a little bit. Okay. Last bead in that sequence in that segment is an eight millimeter crystal. This is the biggest of the clear crystals. So we're going to make a loop as well. So go ahead and give yourself an inch and a half. Make that angle. We're going to move down, make sure it's in the mid uh, alignment of your plier jaws. And we're going to wrap that around and add the closed off two dangle. So you don't want to add this one because that's the one that's open that we made the first one. You want the one that you just finished. Doink. And then we're going to brace that and wrap around and around and around. And then we're going to overlap until we get right up to the jaws there of the other pliers. We're going to snip and tuck. So we're just going to tuck that little end in so it doesn't stick out. And then we're going to slide our 8 millimeter bead down. and make a right angle again. Just give yourself a tiny bit of room, not a ton of space. And then we're gonna go down this length a little bit. Make sure it's in the mid range of your pliers and make it bend like that. Oops. And then go ahead and wrap that around. So this is another one where we're gonna where we're actually going to leave it open because we need to attach it to the chain in a moment. So go ahead and give yourself about an inch and a half of length again. About that long. And we will set this aside and continue the same steps for the last chain tentacle beaded section. So I'm going to go ahead and free up another segment of wire here. Okay. So we will thread this on and make another head pin. So you take the very tip and just, you know, brace with your finger and make the tiniest bend there. And we're going to squish that and crush it so it's nice and flat. Well, it's not super flat, but you know, hardened. Okay. So make sure that's a nice stopping point. And then we're going to make a right angle again. And since I do like to place my round nose pliers right up against the bead, this is as far as it'll bend and the pliers are kind of blocking the way. So we'll just continue that bend by putting your fingers right up against that corner and then you're just gonna press down so that it turns into a right angle there. And we're going to go down the length a little bit, sort of mid middle placement on the pliers, partial bend there. And then we're going to wrap around and brace this with your chain nose pliers. And then we're just going to wrap, wrap, wrap until you get down to the crystal. 
and then start overlapping. And we're going to go ahead and snip and tuck. Oops, sorry. So give that a little tuck there. And this isn't actually that important for sun catchers, the snipping and the tucking part. It's more important for jewelry, but I guess I'm just used to tucking in the ends. I'm just going to straighten this a little bit. All right. So we have our last head pin and dangle for the chain tentacle. So the next bead in that segment is six millimeter which is the middle size bead. And we're going to continue making the loop. So we're gonna do an inch and a half of length, make a right angle. We're gonna move down and rotate around, pull that around. And then we're gonna hook in that little end piece we just finished and brace that with our chain nose pliers and wrap 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 so i do a half turn and then i reposition my hands do a half turn and then i come from behind do another half turn and then start moving upwards just like that more snipping and tucking gonna press that end in there. Cool. So we will slide our bead down and continue making a loop. So give yourself a tiny bit of space there. Make a nice angle. We're gonna move down this length around the midpoint of our plier jaws and make a loop. So we're going to close this one off as well because it only has, I mean, it has three beads in the segment. So we have one more bead to go. I'm just going to wrap, wrap, wrap. All right. Tuck. Do a little check there of your link if you want to. You don't have to, but I'm just going to straighten that a little bit. Cool. So it looks nice and straight. All right. And we're going to do the last large bead. I'm just going to go ahead and free up some more wire here. Just identify which part. Cool. All right. So last clear crystal. So you're going to take your eight millimeter bead, thread it on there. And we're going to give ourselves about an inch and a half. All right. We're going to make that right angle and then make that partial turn. Bring the wire around and then hook on the two link segments we just finished. wrap wrap I'd like to do two wraps and then start going upwards okay more snipping and tucking press that in and slide our crystal down To give ourselves a tiny bit of room, make that right angle, and we're going to move down. Don't forget to check the placement on your plier jaws. Rotate so it should look like that, and come back around. All right, and this is another one where we're going to leave this open actually. 
so that we can attach it to chain later. So let's give ourselves about an inch and a half, which was about a little bit less than my second digit of finger there, finger digit, digimits. Okay, so now yeah, we should have these three dangles. So two with the three beads in the ascending sizes and then one dangle with two beads. So now we need to identify which chain tentacles these go on. Okay, so let's grab your pile of chains. Oh, I just ruined the heart. So just go ahead and lay them all out. It doesn't really matter where they are right now. We just wanna be able to see the full length. So you can consult your printout, but this is the shortest one. So this is actually gonna go on the far right. We'll call this the, the fourth chain tentacle. This is the very last one. Huh? Oh, uh, and then this one gets three beads. And this one is the longest. Third chain tentacle it goes right next to the shortest one here. This one also gets three beads. And we'll take a look at these two. So line these up. So the one that is longer actually goes in the very front on the left side. And this is the first chain tentacle. This is the one that has two beads. You can see this all on your printout. So first one, this goes here. The second chain tentacle gets nothing, just like in the picture. And then I guess you can't really see, but this third three dangle goes on this third chain tentacle. And then the very fourth chain tentacle gets three as well. So we're just gonna attach these. We left these all open. It's easy to identify from the rest of your dangles because these are closed, closed. And then this one has the brass ring. So we're not working with that one. So it'll be all the open link segments we just created. Okay, so we're going ahead. We're going to go ahead and just hook them all on at the same time, and then close them all off at the same time. So go ahead and take your first chain tentacle, and you're going to hook this in to the very last link of the chain. Doesn't really matter which side of the chain, just the last loop, and then just hook that on like that. So remember, for second chain tentacle is naked. We're gonna take the very longest one, which is the third chain tentacle, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take that very last link and just thread that on and hook that in, just like that. All right, and then the very last chain tentacle, the shortest one, same thing. We're going to thread the last link on there and hook that on. Awesome. So now these will be a lot easier to tell apart. So we can set the second one aside because we aren't going to work with, we're, we're not going to work with that until later. And then we can move these off to the side too. So now that we've identified them, we don't need to worry about it. We just need to worry about closing these off. So, so this part's pretty easy. We've done this several times now. You're just going to reach across with your chain nose pliers and brace the loop. We're going to wrap, wrap, wrap until you get all the way down to the bead there. And then start moving upwards. We're gonna squeeze that in, check our link, see if the loops line up. Looks like this one needs to be rotated just a little bit. Cool. And we now have our first chain tentacle. This is the very far left chain tentacle and that has the two bead dangles. All right, ready to move on? 
Let's grab another tentacle. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. So we're gonna reach, try and reach across without smushing any of those two overlap points. And we're going to wrap, wrap, wrap. Until you get down to that bead, and you can go ahead and change direction and start wrapping upwards. Until you run out of room there. Snip and tuck. Careful not to cut any of the other wires in your coil. But if you do, we have two layers, so it's okay. All right, we're gonna check our link. It looks a little bit curved there, so I'm just gonna grip this without smushing the chain, and then I'm going to straighten this out like that. And then it looks like I also need to rotate this a little bit, so now they're nice and straight. Woohoo! So it looks like this one that I grabbed was the probably the last chain tentacle. You might have a different one, but that's okay. We're just looking at the work we just finished, so. Cool! Moving on to the last dangly part on our chain tentacles. So we're gonna close this off as well. Go ahead and brace that loop, being careful just like we have been. And you're going to wrap, wrap, wrap. And moving along upwards. And once we get up to the pliers there, we can snip. Oops, this is not a good, <laughs> don't tuck with that. That, that would be bad. And we're gonna smush that in. And we're gonna check our link. This one came out pretty wonky. So I'm just gonna grab this without crushing the chain there, and then I'm going to straighten it out like that. And then it also looks like I need to rotate this a little bit so that the two loops are facing the same direction. Woohoo! All right. So we have our last dangly section on our chain tentacle closed off. So now these will be a little easier to identify. It looks like I grabbed the longest chain tentacle. So easy way to identify is the first chain tentacle is the one that has two, two beads. And then the very shortest one obviously is the shortest chain tentacle. It's got three beads, longest. So if you, if it's easier for you, go ahead and set these in piles that follow the order on the jellyfish. So if you want to put this on the table somewhere, just in a pile, this will be the first you know, on the very far left, and then take the naked chain, put this right next to it, and then, you know, so on and so forth. And this will be on the very far right, so. All right, and now it's tentacle time. We're gonna do some basic wire forming. So first, we need to identify which wire to pull. There are two spools of thicker wire here, and one of them is 18 gauge, one of them is 16 gauge, the way to identify is the 16 gauge has less in the bundle. So this is the one we want. We want the thicker one. We're gonna save this for later. So this is the thinner one. We're gonna use this for the coiled up tentacles. This is gonna be for the straight tentacles. So go ahead and unwind. We're gonna unwind this. So just be careful when you are unwinding not to poke yourself with this thin wire. We're gonna straighten this out. So you want to, copper wire is rather soft, so you really don't need to like, like really manhandle this. Just kind of gently pull apart and it will straighten. So you don't need to straighten like this, like having such a direct uh, application of force. You're just kind of, gently pulling the wire open and that's really all it takes. When we make these tentacles we will be using similar technique 
very gentle. Okay, so now you have a bunch of wire. You're gonna grab your printout. This is actually different from your printout. This is my draft jellyfish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this loop right here. These are the easiest loops to make. So you're just going to go mid-range, mid-range on your pliers, and you're going to get the, the very end of it and just go make a rotation and then rotate around until it meets up with itself there. And there's a loop though. Then we're going to stick the pliers in, clamp, and then you're gonna use your finger and press this way. So you're kind of making like a question mark, except the loop is closed. So this is gonna help us be almost like a little handle to help us grip it later. There are several different ways you can work with wire. You can make incremental bends to follow this if you want. However, if you do that, you have to be very gentle. It really doesn't require a lot. Just the slightest push will create a curve. So let the metal work with you because metal has its own tension when you start to work with it. It gets harder and harder and sometimes that tension can help you form a nice smooth curve. Doing the incremental thing, it's easier to have like noticeable kinks or just like, ah, you know. <laughs> what I like to do is I will hold this in place, match it up, hold it in place, press it down, and I will actually use more than one finger. So I'll kind of line this up so that it lines up at least on that beginning portion. So it's lined up right here and then it starts to go out of alignment right there. I put my thumb down where I want to keep it and then I'm going to move this up so you can see what my other hand is doing. So if you see how far down my other hand is, you just go like this. You see how the curve is already matching into place? And then I just let it go. I mean, it's rotating a little bit, but if you line it up, I just let it go and it, you can see that it, it's already following the, the, the printout. So once you get, so now it looks like that. All I did, I, I was like, my hand was way down here, just the tiniest bit of force. You know, I had two fingers on it. So now that you have this part, braced. The next, you move your thumb down, further down to where it starts to go off track. And then that, that way, every time you make a new matching portion, you move your hands down. So we're going to hold it here now because this part is in line. And we're just going to kind of bend very little and just keep going down. So you can move your thumb down. Just like that. Coming along nicely. So we keep bending. So if you notice there's a bend here, that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll leave it there for now. So now, if you see, just the tiniest bit of force. We're gonna keep going. So you just keep moving down the line for where you are pressing the wire into the printout. So you move down. So now you want to brace here because this is kind of where it starts to go off track. So we're gonna keep that spot. And then we're gonna start to bend this way. So you just kind of let the wire work with you. Cool. We're going to cut this to this length. All right. <laughs> Might require some force there. Cool. So now we have our first dangly tentacle. Now, if yours didn't come out just like this, I know I, I recognize that I've, I've worked with wire a lot, so maybe this was probably way simpler and easier, easier for me than it was for you, but that's okay. You can actually change this. Once we have this cut to the length that I have in my design, you can actually do whatever you want with your tentacles. 
The reason why I want you guys to cut it to length here is because this design, the weight distribution, if you notice like some of the tentacles are longer and shorter, what happens is if you put too much wire on one of these tentacles, your jellyfish is gonna hang crooked because it's gonna have so much weight in one tentacle on one side. So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how to do this. You cut it and if you wanna make it more wavy or totally do like really tight waves instead of this long flowy tentacle, feel free, do whatever you like. Um, okay, so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna do this other one here now. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start off with that loop, just the easiest loop ever. So you're just gonna put it in mid-range. Actually, I mean, it doesn't really matter where, how big you make your loop for this. And then I like to reposition my hands because sometimes your wrist is like, eh, you're like trying to <laughs> rotate all the way around. So I just uh, reposition my hand and put it like that. I'm going to reinsert the pliers and then just kind of push the stem downwards so that it's nice and straight like that. And then if you want, you can kind of squeeze this a little closer, but it doesn't really matter right now since we're still shaping. So if you notice, there's like a slight wave in this wire. That's okay. We could work with that. Um, don't worry about straightening that right now. We can, if we need to straighten things as we go, we can, so. So we are going to line up this part here. And then you're gonna see at which point the wire starts to, where it lines up. So wherever it lines up, that's where you wanna keep, keep it down. And then you're going to, I'm gonna show you how far my hands are. You're going to just gently pull. That was like barely a movement. I don't know if you saw that. And that was enough to make that bend right there. You see how they're parallel? So here, there is like a slight wave right here. So we can, let's see if we can. I'm trying to make this simple for you guys. Well, if you do get a bend like this, we might have to undo the bend because it goes goes inwards right here. I don't actually know if you can even tell, but so if you get a curve that's unwanted, if you see that, you can just make the slightest, slightest bend, just tiny. Because if you push really hard, it will just make a kink in your wire. So if you want to straighten, you just put your finger on the curve that you want to straighten and apply opposite pressure like that. Very slow movements though, very gentle. So if you see like a bend that you don't want, you put your finger on the outward curve right here and then you use your other and you're going to go in the opposite direction. And then that will straighten whatever unwanted curves might be in there. Okay, so we're going to line this up again. Okay, so let me see if I can, you can see where my hands, my other hand is at. So we're just going to, this is actually how I make my designs at home. So if you ever want something to bend a little bit more, you can actually put another finger, push your thumb a little bit as you're pulling. Not really hard, of course, because then you'll make like a, like a really sharp curve there. So we're gonna move down. Since we, we have these lined up where we want, we're just gonna continue the curve. And feel free to play around with how the wire moves and stuff. You can, you know, go outwards, you could go inwards, just so you can get a feel for forming wire. So it looks like I kind of made a sharp, a little sharper of a bend right here. So if you need to undo that, you just do the same thing. You put your finger against it and open up that, that bend there. So 
So we're gonna move down, move down. Just check back and see everything's lined up. And then look down here, that looks good. And then we're gonna cut. So go ahead and put that in the wire cutters and then you can lift it off the paper. All right, cool. And if you have some extra, that's fine too. You can have fun using it for something at home. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at our two tentacles now. So now that we have them at the length that works for this design, like weight-wise, this is just the weight that works, you can do whatever you want. You can make them wavy or you can, you know, put coils in them, but I like these long flowy tentacles, so we're gonna, I'm gonna leave them like this. But, also we'll put these aside. We're gonna attach them later. And for our design later, we're gonna have some different kinds of tentacles that are more tightly coiled, is that correct? Yes, we're actually gonna do that right meow. What are those called? These are on, the, on an actual jellyfish, on jellyfish anatomy. They're called oral arms. So these commonly are the, uh, you know, wavy tentacles. They also have the stinging cells for when they give you an ouchie. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have this wire. This is 18 gauge wire. This is the thinnest of the thick wire, I guess. So just in general. Uh, when you do wire work, this is kind of the lighter of the thick, heavy gauges. And then anything thinner than this, you mostly just use for jewelry. So unravel this. <laughs> We're gonna need longer lengths for doing this. So I'm actually gonna, instead of making you guys shuffle around for a measuring tape or a ruler or whatever, we're just gonna be resourceful and use a piece of paper. Yeah, so use your printout. So this is gonna be 8.5 inches, right? And then this is going to be 11 inches. As long as it's like close, it should your jellyfish should hang fine, so. And you're gonna hold it to one end and then that's 11 inches. We're gonna need 18 inches for this first one. So 11 plus eight, that would be nine inches. So we're gonna, at that point where we're holding, then we're gonna hold this out. I'm just going to cut it maybe like right here. That's like two inches. No, it's not. Give me a ruler. <laughs> Inch and a half. Oh, very nice. I am so good. <laughs> Sorry to toot my horn in front of you guys. Nobody likes a horn tooter. So we're gonna cut right there. And then we'll set this aside. Tiffany's very proud of her dimensional and eye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'm not proud of much. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to make a loop. So this, if you, you could probably tell that this wire is a lot easier to work with, a lot softer than the other one. So we're gonna do that same thing. Just the most simple loop. You're gonna put the pliers back in and then just push the stem so that it is straight down like that, like a question mark. Cool. Okay, so now that you have this loop, I like to use that cheapy pen that we talked about in the beginning because the loops are kind of, they'll be a lot tighter with this. If you don't feel like grabbing a pen or if you don't have this nice cheapy straight pen, you can use the back of your pliers. So. I'm gonna use this first. Okay, so you're just gonna hold this against the pen like that, and then just start wrapping around and pushing that loop. So this is a great little handle, like I said. It's like a leverage spot that you can use to pull against the pen. And then just Go around and around. So we're gonna go around a bunch of times. You don't have to keep it tight. In fact, we could even mix it up if we want and just have it be, you know, all willy-nilly. Whimsical wire forming. So. So I'm gonna leave this end Mostly, I'm gonna push the end down, but please be careful because it is sharp. You know what, use this. I, I'm worried that you guys are <laughs> gonna hurt yourself. So just do that. 
so you're gonna just press it against the press the end against the pen and then we're gonna pop it off Yeek. so now we have our coil so we're gonna actually just pull it apart again be careful of this end here it might be a pokey so position it so it's not against your fingers you're just gonna pull it open you see how the loop is in line with the direction of the wire, we're gonna change the direction and have it go upwards like that. Grab it and just kind of brace a little bit here and pull it upwards so that when we attach it, it can hang. So what I liked about the jellyfish I saw is that the coils weren't really consistent. So right now we have very consistent telephone cord kind of curls. Um, so what I did is I actually, I would grab, you know, just brace. It's relatively parallel. It's almost like grabbing a rod or something. And we're going to leave some room not holding one of the curls. And then we're actually going to twist like we're wringing a towel. So what that does is it tightens. It tightens some of the curls. I'm gonna, and then you can even, uh, what I like to do is I like to even unwind. So do the same thing where you grip a bunch of the coils except for maybe one, and then you're just gonna unroll. Not too hard, of course, because, you know, as we said, the copper wire is quite uh, soft. So you can unwind some, and then I like to go down and alternate. So I'm gonna tighten. So you're just, so we're going to kind of tighten some of it and then maybe unwind down here. So I'm going to make these bigger. So if you're a person that likes more consistent wraps and a more consistent coil, if you could tag us in a post or something, we'd like to see what it looks like. Yeah, like you're free to do whatever you like with these tentacles and I, I will just I can't wait to see what you make. Yeah, so uh, show us how you what you did with your tentacles. Um, so I could spend all day doing this. Just <laughs> so you know, what I, what I did here because the end is kind of hard to pull open. Just use your pliers, grab the end and pull open. And then what I also like is actually to undo this bottom one a little bit. So what you can do is you can actually use your pliers as a crimp. So you just put it in at any curved spot. 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 <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> That's a new word. Uh, and then you just press and you crimp it. And if you don't press really hard, like if you press really hard, it'll turn it totally straight. But if you don't press it really hard, it actually will just soften the curve, if that makes sense. So see if, I'm, if you see, I'm just kind of like, just like a tiny, tiny press. And then I like to leave the end kind of less curled. And I'm go ahead and maybe add another tight spot. And I haven't edited in pictures of the jellyfish yet, but hopefully we can find some good ones and you'll see their, um, are these oral arms? Oral arms. Yeah, these oral arms or steam tentacles are really, really just messy. So don't worry if it looks messy too. Yeah, messy is fun. Fun, 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 sorry. Um, Okay, so now it looks like this. I'm also going to, so after, first we just modified the, the, the curve, the coils. You know, we made them tighter or looser. Can we do more kazoo? <laughs> Does anybody know kazoo kid? Or, or do Mike and I just spend way too much time on the internet? Um, okay, so I like the way that looks. I like that. Um, so now we're gonna add waves. So first we just modified the coils themselves. And now you can just, if you see how I did that? Here, let me undo it and narrate. You just bend as if you're just bending straight wire. So we're gonna bend that way. Now let's have a bend going this way. And then maybe a bend going this way. I might wanna open this up more maybe. Okay, too long? Well, they're probably having fun making theirs too. Well, let us know if you're having fun if it's too long and boring. <laughs> okay, so there we go. And then let's check on this. I need to uh, take a look at later. Awesome. Okay, I really like how this tentacle came out. So, moving on. <laughs> it was all. Look at my master. Yeah, <laughs> imagine I'm like, these are my earrings. <laughs> um, okay, actually, not to knock anyone that makes earrings like that. Shame on us. Um, okay, so we are now going to move on to the next wavy tentacle, which is about 15 inches. So we are going to use this top portion of the piece of paper and then just put your fingers there. Just so you know, I'm, I make earrings like that. <laughs> Micah makes beautiful jewelry. <laughs> he also makes, that would be like that much. And it's okay if it's not exact. I mean, if you want to get a ruler, you can, but I just wanted to make this easy for you guys without needing all kinds of other tools and stuff. Okay. so. Now we're going to repeat the same steps. So you're going to make a loop. Easiest loop in the world. All right. 
and then you're gonna put that back in and just press the stem down so that it's straight. Cool. And then we're just gonna tighten that a little bit. Okay, so grab your, let's try the, the other method if you didn't have a pen. So you can also use the back of this, just be careful. There are some sharp, pinchy points here, so just maybe grab it like this instead of putting the whole thing in your hand. lay them down you can see they're kind of following I'm not sure if I want them to be like that I might flip it when I attach it so that they aren't like so parallel so matchy matchy in terms of the shape I think I kind of like them in the opposite direction um, all right cool so if you're still wor still working on your tentacles you know go ahead and keep doing that press pause and come back whenever you're ready so for everyone else let's keep going um, so we have one last tentacle. It's the center one, which is going to be about six inches. So you're gonna take your 18 gauge wire. So six inches. So this is an eight and a half inches. So two and a half inches would be about, probably like right here. Good job. Here we go. <laughs> so we're gonna do the same thing. <laughs> it's not broccoli, it's bok choy. Um, okay, so you're gonna make the easiest loop and then you're gonna put the pliers back in and just press the stem down like that. So for this one, I kind of did hand uh, waves, finger waves, like hair. Um, I kind of wanted the two tentacles to be, the, the oral arms to have one different one in the middle. You can do the same technique if you want. Now that we have the length cut, you can do whatever you want with it. So go ahead and wrap it around your plier if you want um, or your pen. For this though, let's try some Let's try working with our fingers, see what happens. So I'm gonna first just go, just like <laughs> a really severe. So this is probably gonna be a lot of fun for you guys because you could just kind of. So what I find helps is when you are doing curves, you don't have to do this, but if you slide your, kind of slide your finger as you're bending it. So I go like this, I go, I'm sliding my index finger down and it makes a nice smooth, smooth curve there. And then we're gonna go, you feel free to make those sound effects at home too if you want. <laughs> okay, so the end. We want this end to have a nice curve to it too. So let's just, like like we said before, just a gentle, you're gonna try and brace right there, like close, not too close, not right up to the wire, but kind of a little bit there. And you're just kind of gently letting the copper wire tension work with you and you're just making a slight bend. And that tension in the metal will is what keeps it in, in place. So you could even just leave it like that actually, but if you want to tweak it more, so we're probably going to need this to be kind of more curved upwards. So you can just stick the plier into the loop and brace with your finger right here and just have it move it upwards. So yeah, so let's see if we need to, what do we need? Let's make this a little bit sharper there. Okay, cool. So, you know, actually I kind of just like it like that, but let's see what happens if we tweak a little bit more. You can also, you know, if you, like if you see that part of these waves have a straight portion here, like this is straight right here. If you don't want it straight, you could even just add more curve to it. So I would add 
more curve upward, sorry, more curve upwards here, and then go on the other side closer to this curve and add more curve downwards there. So now it's more of a wave. And then this is where I would use the bigger portion, I mean the thicker portion of your pliers. So you can grab and then just kind of bend, not a severe movement, and then go on the other side closer to this curve here and just bend. Just a real slight movement. And then we're just gonna bend upwards a little bit, a little bit, and then on this side. Also, if it helps, you could turn it upside down and just do the same thing. Cool. So I kind of like it to be a little bit more inconsistent. So I'm gonna do that thing again where I just kind of play around and open things up. And play around with it. Hmm. I think I want this to be a little bit straighter, so. I'm gonna straighten this out a little bit. Cool. Okay, maybe pull this apart a little bit more. Now it looks the same. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'll go ahead and straighten that little kink there. Anyway, I could do this all day, so let's go ahead and <laughs> I think that's good. We'll bring our other tentacles. Where's the other tentacle? Here it is. Okay. Oh wait. It went this way. So now we can see how this will look. Very cool. Okay. I just kind of, I don't know if you saw that, but I just straightened it, like made it hang. If you look at your tentacle, you want this to be a little bit more vertical. So I just adjusted that a little bit. That looks pretty vertical. Cool. Okay. I think that looks good. All right, so let's set these aside. We're gonna attach these all later. Now that we have all our tentacles done and ready for attaching, before we begin the bead wire wrapping, we are going to mark where our tentacles are hanging. Hello, real quick, Tiff just wanted me to point out that there is a front side and a back side to the frame. Here's a picture of the front side. It's shinier, the back side is matte. It doesn't make a difference. It's entirely your preference, but we just wanted to let you know. Okie dokie. Here we go. So you don't, if you want to use a Sharpie marker, you can just like a, put a tiny dot or something. You don't need to have that though. If you want, you can just take your round nose pliers and just give it a light, you know, give it a, a little scratch. We're going to have a whole bunch of wire wrapping on this bottom portion. So it's not going to be super noticeable. So don't worry about it. And your frame, these are all handmade. So they might not look exactly like your printout, but you know, close enough. So we're going to go ahead and mark the spots on the frame, which in afterwards, if you want to scoot stuff, you'll still be able to kind of use your nails and scoot stuff around if you want. So the marginal tentacles will be right here. This is the three, these three little hanging beads. If you want, you can even, instead of using the printout, just lay them out on the table and mark them that way and just see where you want, how close you want to put them or how spread out you want to put them. Which we may have to adapt a little bit because we're going to be wrapping some beads on here too. So we need room for everything. So we can put these like that. So I'm going to mark right here. So you just give it a little scratch. And then on this side, a little scratch. Cool. And then the chain tentacles. I'm just going to follow what's on the printout. So next, next tentacles are these actually. And this doesn't have to be so precise just because there's so many tentacles, so it'll be okay if it doesn't line up absolutely perfectly. Cool, okay. So we have a bunch of 
little, let's see if you can see, some little lines marked. And these will be kind of covered by all the wire wrapping we're about to do, so. You don't want to be wire wrapping with all kinds of stuff dangling off, and this has all kinds of stuff dangling off, so. Okay, so we're gonna do this in segments. I just wanted to make this a little simpler for you guys. So we're gonna, the jellyfish has a bunch of rows of crystal, so we are going to do them in segments. We're gonna do two rows at a time. So we're gonna start on this side here. You're going to need to quote unquote measure again <laughs> using the piece of paper. Okay. Like and subscribe if you like the video so far. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna take this really thin hair-like wire. This is 28 gauge wire. We're gonna use this to wrap our crystals on. So when you undo this, just be careful because it is hair-like, it can tangle and then when you get kinks in wire that's this fine, it is a lot more detrimental than when you get kinks in thicker wire. So we're going to carefully undo, and if your wire is wrapped into other loops like that, just try and, you know, have a little bit of patience here. Okay. So we are going to measure so you always want to have too much over too little uh, too little is a bummer so <laughs> so we're just gonna measure let's do like uh, one length so it'll be 11 inches and then we're gonna do two lengths, that'll be 22 inches. And then we're gonna do three lengths. So that'll be 33 inches. And then that should be good. I don't want you guys to have to work with too much wire because it gets really whippy. It just whips you in the face. So we're gonna you work with lengths. So go ahead and set this aside somewhere that it isn't going to, um, you know, flop around too much. Or if you have a cat nearby, they're definitely going to want to play with that. So, <laughs> so we're going to be handling these colored crystals now. Um, I would recommend if your hands are getting sweaty like mine, go ahead and take a quick break, bathroom break, wash your hands really quick so that you don't smudge up your crystals too much. And then come back when you're ready. All right, here we go. So first we are going to do, we're gonna leave these crystals on the strand. Actually, let's go ahead and prepare this bead strand. So we're just gonna straighten this. So just take this thicker bead and straighten it like that. There may be a tiny kink. I don't know if you can see the kink, but it's like right at the bead opening. So if you need to, just put your pliers really close up against the hole and just crimp like the way that I've been having you guys. So if you just squeeze lightly, like squeeze like this going down, you basically just crimp the wire straight. So that way you could get rid of whatever kinks might you know, scratch your bead, the drill holes of the beads and stuff. Okay, so now that this is open, you gotta be careful because the beads can all slip off and fall somewhere. So put it somewhere safe, maybe in your bowl or whatever dish you've been using so that they don't go flying everywhere. Okay, so we are going to do a beginning wrap. So to do that, I will usually hold the wire against the frame like this and then just do an initial bend like that so you do an initial bend and then you just you have this extra length here 
as leverage, so as an anchor, and you start wrapping the longer bit of wire. I like to do about four or five wraps to do a, a start starting wrap, I guess. So we can now, now that we have two wraps, it'll mostly stay in place. So go ahead and wrap this shorter end a few times. Just be really careful because the shorter this gets, the more needle-like it becomes. And I have poked myself twice, two days in a row, just last week. And uh, that's not fun. <laughs> so, so go ahead and snip. Actually, we're going to, so the front side of the jellyfish frame is like the shiny side, if you can see. The back side is a little bit more matte, but it doesn't really matter if you don't have a preference. But whatever side you decide to have the front side, we are going to snip the wire so that the end, I don't know if you can see the end nub, it's on the back side a little bit. And then we're just going to tuck. So you're going to push the end and also kind of be rotating. Oops. You're going to push the end and rotate like that. So you're smoothing that little nub down. Okay, so now let's do one more. I'm gonna do five, five wraps. Okay. So we're going to do that first bead. So these, if you notice, these are kind of like a three-dimensional diamond shape. So they have flat edges. So if you can, we might need to scoot this a little bit. So if you can, try and match up the flat edge against the frame there. So what helps me when I want to match up the edges is I will hold the wire out in a certain direction. So if you're wrapping and you just let the bead fall against the frame like this and just kind of change the angle of the wire and the bead will naturally just kind of rest against the frame. And then when you find a good position, you want to lock it in place with your fingers and just pull straight, pull straight down and then start wrapping around the frame. You don't have to pull super tight, but you want it snug. So I like to wrap, I wrap one time and then I put my next bead on there. So we're gonna grab the next one. Just thread that on. And then, so do the same thing where you are kind of holding the wire out at an angle that allows the crystal to kind of naturally fall against the frame there and when you have it in a good position you can hold it in place and wrap around the frame all right and taking the next bead so if you guys have been following me at all I'm sure you know I love teal and turquoise so that's why I chose this color scheme for working on this today, but we do have another color scheme. So don't forget to try and match up the side, the flat edge, and hold the bead in place and then pull straight down and wrap around the frame. But uh, we do have another color scheme. I tried to pick colors that I feel like when you look at pictures of jellyfish, they always have really cool bright colors um, that are fun, pleasant to look at sort of pastels. Here's the other color scheme. Also in an ombre. An ombre uh, gradient design. All right, so I am letting the bead fall into place, holding it there. Hey, uh, hey, Micah, why does it say zero minute, zero end? All right, so moving along. So same thing, don't forget to 
line up the crystal there. And then when you have it in a good position, you're going to just pull down and wrap around. Oop. And then if you need to scoot things, we'll still be able to move these along, down, along the frame if, if needed. So if you see, I just kind of let the wire go at a certain angle and that, there's that angle, that's the good angle and then I just lock it in place with my finger and wrap. don't get this perfect that's totally fine uh, just be careful if you line up the edge of the crystal against the frame and wrap it really tight it could crack the crystal a little bit uh, well actually I shouldn't say crack me a chip it'll chip it and then uh, you should just be mindful of that because you don't want little tiny glass shards or anything anywhere but it shouldn't uh, f like fully destroy your crystal or anything if you chip it. It should be totally fine. All right, so once we get to the top, actually, let me consult my, so just a preview of what we're gonna be doing. We're starting here. We're moving up, and then we're gonna wrap down, and then we're gonna go down here. And that'll be the first section. Then we're gonna do this one, go upwards, wrap, and then go downwards. And then we're gonna stop there. And then we're gonna start this one. Go up, and then wrap, come down, end right here. So this is how, it, once, you des once I designed the colors, then I had to figure out the how it would actually execute it. So it looks like this actually needs to be a little bit more spread out. So you can just, uh, so this is something that I find I have to do a lot when I make sun catchers, especially because sometimes your frame comes out differently from when you had your design drawn on paper or different things like that. So I basically just scoot, use my nail to scoot all of these down. And then you can also grab the actual crystal and move it as well. So a lot of times I will have to adjust things or if I want the spacing to be a certain way, uh, especially with designs that have beads that go from big to small, sometimes you want, I want like the bigger beads to be more spaced out than, and then the smaller, as the beads get smaller, I want them closer together. So I will use this little scoot method quite often. All right, cool, that looks good. Okay. So now that we have those spaced out a little bit more, we will continue wrapping. So you're just getting that edge straight face, the straight side lined up with the frame. Cool. Scoot that down a little bit more. Okay. So I think I'm actually going to leave this open right now. Because then that way when we wrap around this, see how easy it is? We can just go like this, which is really nice because this is open. So I'm going to leave it open maybe until we go further down the sections here. So you're just going to wrap, keep wrapping until we get to 
this side here. And if you need to a moment, take your time. Press pause if you need to. Okay, so this is where we are going to now do something different. This is a new technique that, that we haven't done in any of our other videos yet. So you're gonna take your first crystal. For me, I kind of like having it laying flat so that I can use both my hands. So first I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do. So we're kind of gonna sew, almost like sew the beads in place or stitch them in place or something. So you're gonna put the bead on and then you are going to, I'm just gonna hold it close up for you guys to see. You're going to thread the wire in one more time. And then we're gonna pull, pull, pull. And this is why the wire we're using is really thin this time, so that we can do this. So as we get, so if you see the bead is free to move around, I want it kind of close to the frame. So what I do is I will hold this in place and then I will start pulling this tight. And then as it gets tighter, the wire tension will start to harden. So then I will pull and then use my index finger to kind of push at it. And then as you push at it, it'll give you more slack to pull, to pull it tight. Cool, and then now we have one bead sort of sewn into place. So we're gonna continue down using the same method. So there are six beads that are gonna fit in here. So we're gonna space them relatively close together. We could even maybe move this up a little bit higher by doing the scoop method. You scoot. And then that way that starts a little bit higher. Okay. So we're gonna thread, oops, we're gonna thread this through again, just like that. And it's okay if it moves around in the beginning, but as this loop gets smaller and smaller, you want to make sure it's in position. So maybe like that that far. And then feel free to hold this up to your printout, line it up if you want to try and space it out better. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it here. So I'm just kind of sandwiching this whole area with my fingers and then I'm pulling this, pulling this until it starts to, I, until you start to feel some resistance. And that means the metal's getting a little bit stiff. So I will usually hold the bead and maybe hold part of the frame, like this, this bottom part of the frame, just to keep it in, a, in, in the right spot. And then I will kind of nudge it with my index finger there and then pull at the same time so that it can be nice and snug like that. All right. And we're gonna do the next crystal. It's the same thing. Just gonna thread that through. Oops, sorry. So sometimes, this is what I meant about uh, holding it against the table. So you can get your bead into position there. And it doesn't have to be so perfectly spaced. I mean, this is a jellyfish, so. <laughs> You can just kind of hold it against the table or whatever you're working on. And then once it gets kind of tight, then you might want to lift it up and do the finger nudging method. You're just kind of nudging it. There you go. 
Yay. And then another cool thing we can do is uh, we can kind of make this row of beads have a little bend in it so that it gives the jellyfish some dimension. So we can do that in a moment. I'm just gonna thread this through. And then pull, pull, pull. And it doesn't, if you can see how the loops doesn't really matter what side, see the loop goes on this side and the loop goes on this side. It doesn't really matter what side it's on. You can have them mishmash, or if you want to make them all match, you can just rotate, rotate it like that so that they're all on the same side. But I kind of like mix, mix, mat, mix and match because uh, it reminds me, I don't know, like it just has, it gives it a nice texture, I feel like. So we have two more beads on this line. And then we can wrap it to the frame. So I just kind of don't worry about the placement until it gets to the loop gets to about this size. And then I want to make sure that it's Closer there, and then pull, and then if I need to change the position, there we go. And last bead on this side. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where the bead's at until the loop gets smaller. So let's go ahead and scoot this. So if you need to scoot it, you're kind of pushing the bead. You're holding the wire and pushing the bead into the position that you need. And then you can tug on this until you start feeling some resistance. And just kind of nudge. I'm just kind of pushing the wire, and there we go. Tugging at the same time. All right. So now, what might be cool is if you kind of shape this so that it forms like a wave or something with the frame. So that might be cool. It doesn't have to be super drastic if you don't want it to be. Just a slight wave or something. Something like that. And then we're gonna wrap it to the frame. Oop. So let's try and line it up so that it's not exactly where our notches are. So let's go in between, like maybe right there, in between these two notches. And then it might still move around, so we can always scoot it out of the way when we're ready to attach our tentacles. So now we're gonna do an ending wrap. So I'm just wrapping really tight. It's okay to pull pretty tight now because the you don't have to worry about it tugging on the crystal. So let's do four or five wraps. I will usually kind of cinch them closer together with my nail, like that. So I'm gonna do five wraps and then we're gonna end it. So snip with a little bit of extra length and then we're just going to tuck that down. I'm going to rotate and 
to make sure that that end is nice and smooth. So I usually will apply some soft pressure and rotate the pliers so that they're smooth it down. Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab our wire spool again. And then we're going to measure off. So usually you'll have some extra, which is good. You want some extra because you never want to run out in the middle of doing something that sucks. Um, okay. So we're going to do two full lengths of paper long wise, 11 inches this is long wise. We're going to measure 22 inches this time. So go from one end to the other and then take that, and bring it back over and do another full length. And then cut it there. This segment, these two rows we're about to do are a little bit, a little bit shorter, so we don't need that much wire. Okay. So we are going to start this over here. So go ahead and try and start it somewhere in between one of your notches that you made or if you use a Sharpie marker, one of your marks. Okay. And then once you wrap twice, you can go ahead and finish off this end. Just don't use your fingers when it's this short because you can definitely stab yourself. That looks scary, doesn't it? Not fun. Okay. And we're just gonna tuck this end here. So I usually will apply some pressure and then rotate around so that it smooths it down. And we have a few wraps so that way we can keep going with the... So I'm going to do five wraps before I start. Okay. So there are four crystals in this row or column. Is it row or column? <laughs> in this stripe. So we're going to do the same technique we've been doing. So just pull, pull through, and then it's going to start having some resistance once this loop gets smaller. So now it doesn't really want to go as much. So you just kind of push on the loop. So I'm pulling in this direction and you want to help scoot the wire along because it's feeding through like this, right? So you want to push on the side of the loop. You're kind of like scooting the wire down like that, if that makes sense. So that it gets nice and snug. And you might actually like the little loops to stay looser because they could look like little bubbles or something like that. So it's totally up to you. Whatever you like. They don't have to be this snug if you don't want them to. So we have four beads on this one, so we should probably space it out around the similar increments as the previous segment we just did. So. There we go. Thread this through again. So I'm holding this up for you guys to see, but if it's easier for you to work like this while pressing the bead into the table, it should 
you can absolutely do that. So it's starting to get tight, so I'm going to push. So the I'm pulling in this direction, so I want to help feed the wire. So when I push on it, I'm kind of using my thumb to go this way. And these are all my favorite colors. Let me know which color scheme you guys picked or which one you liked best. It takes uh, a bit of, it really takes a lot of design time. So I, 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 try, I like to offer a few different color schemes, but it just, I, after I came up with these two, I was like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's uh, <laughs> too much. It's also really crazy when we package these things with like multiple color schemes. So I was like, you know what? I think uh, I think we should not go so crazy and just we'll have two really pretty ones that are, you know, one's a cool, cool toned, and then one is a warm tone like with pinks and stuff. So if you notice, there it's kind of at a wave like this. I think I like that. I'm gonna keep it like that. You can also, you know, tweak it if you want to, or take it away if you want it straight, just like this. But I kind of liked it following the the shape of the the outside of the jellyfish. So, so now we're going to wrap. An easy way to wrap is just to push the wire through the frame like that. We're going to wrap a few more times. Until we get this a little bit more spaced out over here. Well, actually, this looks like a good spot. Let's go right here. We can start right here. Okay. So this also has four beads, so we can go ahead and just space them out just like this one, if you want to. If you want it a little bit different, you can do it however you like. Okay. Eh. Be careful when you are working with the wire that you don't just kind of tug on it without being mindful of what's going on further down the line. because. You, if you just start pulling on it without realizing that there's a twist, it will kink up and those kinks, because this wire is so fine, it can just snap. So I'm going to keep this pretty close to the frame there. So I'm just going to scoot it up and I'm going to hold it in place. And then right, so this time I'm pulling the wire this way. So when I push on the loop, I want to feed it because it the, the loop goes like that. I want to feed the wire through the bead, so I'm just kind of pressing it like that. Does that make sense? Alright, next bead. I love this color. This one right here, which is the second one after this really pale green, it is actually... It's a Swarovski color that uh, the, the glass itself is actually this turquoise color and then they put a really cool metallic coating on the outside that turns it greenish with a pink tint. So cool. I just think it's so pretty. So I'm going to just lay it down. It's starting to get a little tight. So I'm going to, so if you get confused at all, just remember this is the direction I'm pulling the wire. The loop is going like this through there. So I'm going to push on the loop like this way so that I can feed it, help press it along so that it goes through, it goes through the hole. Thread that through. So 
So after you get the hang of it, you might get a little faster. But if at any point in time I'm moving a little bit faster than you, feel free to hit pause and come back when you're, when you're all caught up. Just gonna press this down here. So I'm right now, before I secure this in place, I'm actually comparing, seeing where these are at. So I think I'm actually gonna move this down a little bit and give this some more length so that I can create like a little wave thing. Because if you pull it really tight, it'll be straight down. And it also might pull on the frame a little bit. So we want it to have a little bit of slack so that we can do like a little wave like that. So I'm gonna have it like there. Something like that. And then we're gonna try and finish this wrap in between here in between the notches that you made on your jellyfish frame. And in order to keep this from pulling really tight, let's just do an initial bend like this and give ourselves however much slack we want. And then we're just gonna try and hold that there on the frame so that when you're pulling, it's not pulling this line of beads really tight. Once you have a couple wraps, it should stay after that. So just wrap this about four or five times. I'm gonna go five just because this wire is very fine, really thin. So I wanna make sure it's secure. So we're gonna snip so that there's a teeny, teeny tiny bit of length there so that we can tuck that in. So you just apply light pressure and you rotate so that it's nice and smooth. And then we can tweak this as we like. Okay, and the last segment, we're gonna take our measuring tool. <laughs> we're gonna grab our spool. So make sure you undo these loops so that it doesn't tangle or create any crazy kinks or anything. So we're gonna measure 33 inches, just like that first section we did. So that'll be three full lengths of paper. So I'm just going to hold it and go to the other side and then go back and then third length. Okay. Just snip that. Okie dokie. So now we're gonna start a new, we're gonna do a new starting wrap. So we're gonna create an initial fold there with a little bit of length. Actually, I'm gonna turn this upside down. A little easier for me to work this way. So we're gonna hold that length in place. And then I'm just gonna wrap. And since this part is still open, instead of like having to thread the wire through, you can just kind of bring it through like that. Woohoo! Gotta love these shortcuts. Okay, so once you have a couple of wraps, we can go ahead and secure this little nub. Well, I guess it's not a little nub yet, but it's gonna be. Okay, so I'm trying to space this beginning wrap in between our notches that we made. And then I'm going to finish off this by tucking that end there. So I'm just applying pressure and then rotating around. That way you don't poke or scratch yourself while you're working. Okay, so... I'm 
next bead. So we can kind of consult our other side here, see how close this one is to the frame. So let's make sure we space that one in a similar spot. So I'm just going to try and keep it in place here against the frame. And I'm going to push on this loop. So remember, I'm pulling the wire this way and the loop goes like this. So you want to nudge the wire on this side so that it presses presses forward and can feed through the, the hole. Cool, that looks pretty good. All right. Nice bee, we're almost there. You guys are doing great. So this is actually a, this bead threading technique is not one that I've actually used that many times. I came up with it I mean, I'm sure I didn't invent it, but I thought of it uh, when I was first coming up with the design for the jellyfish. So I'm also, I also haven't done this that many times. But I rather like the utility in this technique. So we can also go back and compare see how close together these are so we should scoot this down just a smidge more and we'll try and keep it in place and then i'm using my thumb i'm using my index finger to kind of lock it in place and then i'm using my thumb to scoot the wire and if it's not like exact it's totally fine this is an underwater creature so this is your underwater creature All right, threading. So we're gonna put this pretty close, maybe like right there. So you can do the table method, just press the B down. And then once you get up here, I'm kind of, so I'm resting the bead on my middle finger here, and then I'm using my index finger to keep it from sliding down this way. So I'm putting my index finger there and I'm using my thumb to kind of, and if you can see the wire is feeding into my hand here. So I'm using my thumb to kind of nudge the, the wire there, so. All right. Next B. So this has six beads in it, just like the side. And we're actually going to go up here and start connecting here and wrap and then come back down this way. So just gotta get in there. Sometimes, if you have a sharp kink, it won't want to pull through so just try and straighten that a little bit just a little so that you can pull it through 28 gauge wire is gets kinked up really easy this is very very fine wire and in fact they make wire even finer than this can you believe it I've never worked with anything thinner than this before, so this is my limit. This is as far as I'll go. All right. Two more beads on this section. Oh! Be careful that you don't flick your beads in random, <laughs> into random places. That does happen a lot. Oops. 
get in there. There we go. Oh, oops. Also, you know, when you work with wire that's long and fine like this, it just gets caught on everything. One of the joys of wire working. So let's, before we secure that into place, let's just take a gander really quick. So we want like a little wave in there. And I just want to see, so we're going to have one more bead. It'll probably go right there. So this looks like a good, this placement looks fine. Cool. I'm going to do this last one, which is an awesome, like, uh, what is the color? Cerulean? Is that how you say it? Cerulean blue. Super rich blue. Okay. So I'm just gonna create that wave like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit, get it into a spot that I like. That looks good. And I'm going to wrap around here while holding this in place. So I'm holding the bead and the frame, holding both. And then once you wrap a few times, then you don't have to keep holding it anymore. It'll kind of stay in place. So we're gonna go through and <laughs> continue wrapping. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to close this frame here. So we're gonna do like a figure eight. Um, so you're just gonna alternate back and forth so we're gonna go over and then we're going to wrap this around like normal just like we would and then we're gonna come back around the bottom piece and this you could pull pretty tight just a little a little bit tighter than you would with the crystal and then if the this little coils blocking the way if you just kind of rotate rotate the frame like this you might be able to squeeze that in closer so that you can have your wraps be closer so you're gonna wrap and then you're gonna come around just like you would normal but then you're gonna go around this side and then we're going to come around and then we're going to go around the top piece come around and then we're going to go back around the bottom piece and then around the top piece again and bottom piece Okay, so that's about four wraps. Let's do one more. Push the wire through. And then we're gonna start, we're gonna flip the, flip the frame over and then just wrap around both entirely. Just because this wire is very thin, so we wanna make sure this is nice and secure. So now we're just wrapping over both. Like that. So we're gonna keep wrapping until we get to this point where the two pieces of the frame start to split off. They start to fork out. And we're going to start only wrapping on the top side. And we're going to start placing our beads. Okay. 
And don't forget to line these up to the frame. So I usually do that by having the wire go in a certain direction. So if you notice, if you have the wire going straight up like this, it's not going to sit on that flat edge. So I kind of just turn the wire to an angle. There you go. See, it's now the flat face is facing the frame and I lock it into place with my fingers and pull downwards. You're not pulling super tight, just a little bit of pressure. You want it to be snug, but not so tight that it's uh, chipping your crystal or anything. These are delicate little beauties. Okay, so we're just going to see if that's in a good position. That looks good to me. Lock that into place. Pull down and push through to wrap. We wrap one time and then put the next crystal. Woohoo! We're almost there, guys! All right, so make sure that looks good. Okay. So hopefully you've gotten the hang of wrapping these on there. And again, if I'm moving a little bit faster than you are, take your time, press pause if you need to, catch up. scary to drop a bead especially if you have a carpet because it can be lost okay cool last three beads So you can see uh, why we wanted to attach our tentacles later, because this would have been a nightmare trying to do all this <laughs> with tentacles hanging off. Okie dokie. So let's take a look. It's a little bit far away from that edge, so let's go ahead and scoot, scoot, scoot. Do some scooting action here. Cool, cool. All right, that's a little bit better. So I'm gonna try, it does have a curve here, so you're not gonna, probably can't get it completely flat, but just as close as possible, lining up the flat edge, so. Okay, and then if you need to scoot it down a little bit, you can. Cool, all right. Pretty. Okay, so let's do five wraps to secure this a little end wrap. And then we're going to snip so that there's a little bit of extra. And then we're just going to tuck and rotate. Cool. All right. And then we can we can finish tweaking this after we put the tentacles on because we're going to be manhandling this when we wrap everything on okay so let's do the tentacles first okay so let's start on this side we're going to take that thicker wire that we had 
So now we are going to, now that the spool is a little bit smaller and easier to manage, we're gonna unspool this entire thing. So just take these little containing wires off. Just be careful not to poke yourself. And you should have a little bit left here. Okay, so. So don't forget to consult your printout, but the first one we're gonna attach is gonna be this marginal tentacle here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to do a starting wrap. So we start with a little bit extra length here and just hold it against the frame. And we're gonna do a fold or a bend like that. And then we're going to hold that length there and we're gonna come around and push that through, just like threading it through. It's a little different from sewing where you would use the tip and go in this way. I find that pushing it through maintains the, the tension around the coil so that it stays nice and tight. That's how I like to do it, so. So once you have a couple of wraps, you can go ahead and, oops, sorry. Oh, I just accidentally crossed those over. <laughs> there we go, let me separate those two. So we're going to tuck that in like that. Cool. Let's do one more. So we'll do four wraps for the starting wraps. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to wrap so the starting and ending wraps are usually these really tightly nestled together coils. And then once we start just the general wrapping, I start to space them out a little bit. So for this, we are going to thread, starting with the, with the, the loop next to the bigger bead. We're gonna thread that through. And then in order to get it to hang, because if you do it really tight like this, It'll still hang, but I like to give it a little bit more slack. So what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of pull, well, you don't have to pull because I was just doing that to show you, but you're gonna hold it in a position that you want it to be. So I want it to be maybe be that far away. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just sandwich that hole just like that in the position that you want. Sandwich this part of the frame and the, the link, and then just start wrapping. Just an initial wrap will be enough. And now you have a little space there. So once you have an initial wrap, you don't have to worry about holding it anymore, but you can if you want to. I'm just used to keeping it secure, so I will. Okay, and then the next so I'm gonna do one more wrap because it looks like the notch is right there. I'm gonna wrap one more time. Okay, next tentacle is, feel free to consult your printout. Next tentacle is gonna be this long curved one or you might have changed yours, but whatever you changed it to, it's gonna be this longer one. We're going to... So when you thread it on, make sure you put it facing the right direction. So I guess I'm holding the jellyfish upside down. But So the tentacle is going this way. So you don't want to wrap it this way. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but it would just hang. The center of gravity would make it hang differently, so. And then if you accidentally undo it, these loops, the, the good thing is these loops are open, so we could, it's, it's an easy fix if you accidentally find that you put it on the wrong, the wrong direction. So I like to hold the jellyfish upside down. It just makes it easier for me to, to wrap. Okay, so we're gonna do that same thing where we are going to position 
We're gonna hold it out just a little bit and then we're just gonna sandwich that whole area between our fingers, the pads of our fingers, and then we're going to wrap. So we're gonna wrap once and then we're gonna take a, take a look and make sure it looks okay. Cool, looks good. All right, let's continue wrapping. So it's okay to, we're kind of overlapping on that really fine wire, that's totally fine. So I see another notch right here. So it's time to add the next dangling part, which was, if you consult your printout, it was the shortest chain with the three So that's this one here. So it doesn't really matter. This can face either direction. So, but just make sure you put it on the very last chain link. So this gets a little tricky because you got little things dangling everywhere. So. Just going to well since this is chain this is okay it's got more movement so you can go ahead and pull it taut and it'll still dangle just fine so this one you don't have to do that thing where you're holding it in a specific position so we're just gonna wrap I'm going around and pushing through the frame until we get to this next notch right there. I would say that's about here. So our next tentacle was this shorter coil. So there was one that was longer and then one that was shorter. I think I wanted it, I I wanted it this way. So we're gonna go ahead and take this shorter one. and thread that through the loop. This one also has an open loop, so if you end up wanting to flip this in a different direction or something, you can totally do that. So for this, since this is a stiff piece, we want to do that thing where we space it out. So I think I want it about that much room, so I'm gonna go ahead and sandwich this right there. And you're just going to pull straight down and push through the frame and then wrap around and now you should have a little bit of wiggle room there which is what we want all right we're going to wrap 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 until we get to this notch here it's another notch right there so the next Dangling piece is this very long chain with the three the three beads. This is the longest chain. So you're just going to thread that very last link onto that. And it's okay if some of your tentacles get a little bit tangled. We can just fix that later. So this is another, so this is a chain, so it's okay to just wrap it tight. You don't have to worry about maintaining any distance or anything. And then also afterwards, if you feel like you want to space these out a little bit, you can always do the scoot method. So nothing is set in stone. So we're just going to overlap on top of that fine wire. We're gonna keep wrapping until we get to this notch here. And the next tentacle is our center tentacle here. So we're just going to thread that. Actually, I'm going to, that loop looks like it's a little bit open, so I'm just gonna squeeze it shut until it touches the other side, the other side of the wire. 
Okay, so this is another stiff piece. So I'm going, going to want to space this out. So I think I want it that far away. So you just sandwich it there, hold that whole section, including the frame. And then you're just going to wrap around once. We're going to check and see if it went okay. Yep, looks good. And we're going to keep wrapping. You can keep a hold there if you want. Wrap, wrap, wrap. Until we get to that next notch right there. And the next dangling is the naked chain with nothing on it. So you're just going to thread the very last link. And then the chain doesn't really need to be spaced out or anything. But you can still hold it in place, otherwise when you wrap it, it might want to pull the chain over like that. So in order to keep the chain on the bottom, we'll just hold it in place, but you don't have to hold it spaced out or anything. All right. So we're gonna wrap, wrap, wrap until we get to the next notch there. So the next tentacle is our long oral arm as it is called. So we're just gonna put this on first and then if we need to make any adjustments we can. So this is another stiff component so we are going to hold it a little bit away from the frame and just lock it into place with our fingers and then we're going to do one wrap. Check back. Looks good. And then wrap, wrap, wrap. And then the next, I see another notch here. So the next one is going to be this last chain tentacle with the two beads on there. Go ahead and just hold that. You don't need to space this one out since the chain is nice and dangly. I'm gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. And then we have another notch right here. So let's put the next tentacle, which is this one here. This sort of S, very slight S wave. So we want to make sure it's going in the direction that we want. Cool. And if not, you can just open up that loop and fix it pretty easy. So you might have things like this, <laughs> which is pretty normal. Just try and untangle everything. And then once we're done, we can get everything all fixed up and purdy. Okay, so this is another rigid component. So we're gonna wanna hold it spaced out from the frame. So when you find a nice position, just hold that there and then wrap. Just go back and check, make sure it's got some room to move. Cool. And then wrap, and then it looks like the other notch is getting covered by this wire here. I'm going to go ahead and overlap. Okay. And the very last marginal tentacles. So we're going to give this a little bit of slack too. So just hold that there. Make sure it looks like it's got room. Cool. And we're gonna keep that in place and do some finishing wraps here. Let's do like four, four five. Let's do four. Looks good. We're gonna snip 
the back and tuck that in. Cool. All right. We're almost done. And your unit might need to scoot some things around, and that's okay too. So now we're going to attach this very last dangle, which is what you're going to hang your sun catcher from. So we left this open so that we can snap this into place just like we have been with all the other stuff. So the opening there, you just kind of pull it through that open spot. That makes sense. And then now, this might be a little tricky because you got things dangling everywhere, <laughs> but you're going to brace this loop and try not to crush that crossover point of the wires. So make sure that they're not crushed. You don't want to cut, accidentally cut the, uh, the wires. And then we're going to close this off. You're going to wrap, wrap, wrap until you get down to the bead. And then start going upwards. space until you get right up to the pliers and then you can snip about halfway into the barrel of that coil and then you're just going to tuck that little end in and then we can do a check and see if this is hanging straight if you see it's kind of like neat so we're going to just grab this and press that straight so that it's a little bit more aligned. Yay! Okay, so now let's go back and see what's going on here. <laughs> so it looks like this got a little bit rotated. So just sometimes it will want to, let me see if I can, it will want to ride up on this loop. So you might need to, you see how it's just twisted around? And now it's hanging in that right spot. So sometimes they get kind of like twisted back like that. So you can just untwist. Okay, so let's just take a look at everything. So you just kind of want to hold your jellyfish up and let things hang so that you can see if anything needs to be adjusted. Or if you wanna change the direction of anything. So it looks like you can see that this tentacle wants to hang this way instead of facing flat. So what we're going to do is you're going to take this loop without crushing that little wire there into it. You don't want to cut that. You're just going to grasp this whole thing against the, the, the flat, this flat surface. And then you're just going to give it a turn so that now it's perpendicular to that loop there. So then now when it hangs, yay, it wants to hang facing the right direction. Just pull that through. All right, cool. And then we might also need to do that for these tentacles. Let me see what direction. All right, and now you guys are done. Great job. This is a still adapted for beginners but this was a pretty involved project so hope you guys had fun i think everything went swimmingly <laughs> uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed uh, if you enjoy what we do uh, these kits are 
uh, you know, I hope you guys have fun making them. Show us, reach out to us on Instagram or Facebook and send us pictures of your finished piece. We'd love to share it in some of our upcoming videos. <laughs> Here we go.